Hey folks, Aaron here from Aaron's Practical Reviews. Today we got some newer devices. N-E-E-W-E-R, that's the brand. And they are new to me. I'm gonna be reviewing the newer fluid head tripod and also the newer ball head and some of the quick shoe, quick mount, quick release plates, whatever you wanna call them. And I've got them all combined here. So we're gonna go over that. It's very smooth. The leg extensions, just your basic snap. Slightly different style on the legs. Now this is the monopod that's built in right here. And this unscrews. So you would unscrew this, and you would unscrew this as well. Mount that on here and you've got a monopod. So this is its max height, actually over my head. So it's a, it looks like it's around six foot, maybe a little over six foot. The tallest tripod I've ever had. So here's the thing. When it's at its tallest is when you need the most stability. So you need to widen the legs, which makes it shorter. So it's kind of a catch-22. Yeah, it can be that tall, but then you have to widen the legs, which then makes it shorter to add the stability to keep it that tall. Simple solution would have been just to add a locking mechanism on the legs to help add stability. Uh, here's your fluid head. Now this is a lock and a loose. And that locking button does add a little bit of pressure to kind of tighten this up just a little. But it's certainly not as smooth. The tilt function is not as smooth in my opinion as the panning. Maybe I'm just not used to doing it, but it just doesn't feel as smooth. And if you unlock it completely, then it gets really easy. As you can see there, it almost falls. I'm not even touching it. So you've got some flexibility there with that locking knob, but it's not a lot. And then the same is for the front here. This is your locking mechanism for the panning. It's very smooth. Both are very smooth motions. The initial movement starts with a slight, slight turn here, then it catches, and then the fluid head starts. There's no way to really tighten that any more than I've already tightened it to eliminate that, that little bit of play at the initial point of trying to pan. Now it's important if you're panning, you wanna lock the tilt mechanism because the camera will fall forward just from the weight of the camera so I lock that let's start it and see if we how smooth it is okay there's that initial see there's that initial jerk I was talking about when you start it then once you start you can keep it really smooth so let's go back and then this is an extension to raise or lower and then it just tightens by, by tightening that. And I've noticed this here, when I have the 150 to 600 on it, does want to move a little bit. I've really got to work on tightening that. It does create, it, it's not, it doesn't tighten as well as I'd like it to. So this is the plate that it comes with, the quick release plate. And as you can see from the size of it, it's really large. I don't like it because, as you can see, the differences here. On the bottom of the camera, it comes out and almost touches the lens, which puts it almost on the zoom ring or the focus rings based on wherever you slide it. And it's hard to make it even on the mount. So these little guys here are a lot easier to use. And also, if you notice, if you're out in the field, you have to carry a screwdriver for mounting on this because it, the screw that it came with doesn't have anything you could tighten with your fingers. So I've just decided to go with a different setup here with this for the reasons that this is much more compatible with, as you can see here, it fits better on the all the lens collar mounts. It's smaller. It's just a much better size for me, and it makes it much more accessible to all my equipment. And I can buy a bunch of these 
and these little guys are super cheap as far as price but they're they're metal or aluminum or whatever they're they're not plastic so I have confidence that these are gonna these are gonna hold up when mounted on here and one more thing that's important to note on the on these plates here is they have these allen head screws in here is so these are safety mechanisms it has to be completely undone to come out so even if it's loose it's not going to slide out you have to unscrew this almost completely to release it so if it gets loose on you if you're walking and it starts to move those help it help protect your gear from not sliding out Let's try this. This is a really neat little spot. I wonder what it looked like with the 720p footage. Let's try that. That's got to be super smooth. All right, so one of the important things here is how how long does it take to actually switch out? And this is what I was talking about with this setup here. Because I have that, because I have these on everything, And that's it but other than that um, it's extremely well built solid this none of this is plastic which is awesome and then up here is your release for the head and then it'll it'll go this far but it won't completely release until you push the release button over here which is also a nice feature so you don't it doesn't accidentally fall off if you accidentally forget to tighten this. It'll hold it on. You have to actually press that to release it. It does have this underneath to hold your bag while it is uh, down. So you can put your bag on here and hold your gear under there. I don't know how much weight that'll hold. It doesn't feel very strong, so it might hold the bag with a couple lenses or something. I wouldn't put anything over probably 15 pounds on that. So that's it. Folds up fairly nicely. And one more thing to note, when it came in the box, this piece was not attached, so it allows you to attach it to either the left or the right side. That's it. So, that's so it. now we're going to use a, the 70 to 200 zoomed in at 200. This will show the smoothness a lot more and amplify any mistakes or any uneven movements. Sometimes I can actually feel that it's not that I've screwed up while I'm going but it's still fairly smooth. Yep, it's definitely smooth. Like I said, errors are usually seem to be human error more than a fault of the device. Like right there, I just stopped a little bit. Over that. Okay, so the final verdict on the tripod first and foremost is that the fluid head works fine it's very smooth um, the panning is definitely more useful than the tilt the tilt feature I thought was a little jerky and inconsistent versus the panning uh, however with the panning on the first initial tug it does jerk quite a bit so that first split second of footage is kind of useless uh, as far as the build of the tripod it's a basic tripod and I'd say that's the weaker version of it the weaker part of the deal. The uh, actual legs on the tripod itself are fairly weak and it's a it's very simple setup but there's no locking mechanism on it. I don't particularly like the quick release plate on the actual tripod so that's why I went with the ball head with the shorter smaller uh, Arco Swiss type quick shoe mounts it's just so I can put that on everything like I showed in the video. 
but all in all for $70, it's a tripod with a fluid head that works fairly well and I think will enhance my videos quite a bit the more I use it and it's very easy to move around. It's just a, a better tripod than what I had and it's not gonna break the bank. So, good product, inexpensive product and easy to use. That's all I can say about it.